Hey, Dan. Hey, Sandy. How are you this afternoon? All right. I know Marty should be joining us. He just asked for the link again, so and he has yeah. it. Michael's a little late because he is stuck in Lewiston right now. Okay. <laughs> so he'll join us as soon as he can, if he can. Um, is Krista and Nate? He'll be joining momentarily. And that, of course, who's logging on now. Hi, Bruce and Mike. Thanks for joining Hello. us. Hi, Kathy. Long time no see. You're muted. <laughs> there we go. Hello. And here comes Krista and Marty. I will. Hi, Krista, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> okay, Marty, can you hear us? You're muted, Marty. Marty, can you hear us? I just sent him a text. There he is. Can you hear us okay, Marty? Okay, good. Okay, good. All right. See Nate yet? Just send me text quick. Oh, here it comes. Hi, Nate. Hello, good afternoon. Okay. All right, um, now that we've got the counselors online, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start the meeting. We have a lot of material to get through. Um, I'm gonna call the uh, February 23rd, 2023 uh, council workshop to order with roll call, Councilor McGuire. Present. Councilor Chapel. Present. Councilor Meany. He's giving the thumbs up. <laughs> I'm Councilor Carter. Um, Councilor Curtis will be joining us um, when he can. He is uh, uh, stuck in a meeting in Lewiston. And so hopefully um, he'll be able to join us a bit later. Um, um, I appreciate everyone uh, bearing with us on Zoom again this evening. I think the weatherman got the forecast just right, but that's okay. I'm not looking forward to the second round this evening. So um, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and lay out the objectives of this meeting. Um, we may have some residents who might um, be Zooming in tonight or might watch the video after the fact or watching this on our broadcast. Um, this is not a public forum on Yarmouth Road. We have had a couple of those so far, which were very well attended, and we appreciate all the feedback we received from those who were in attendance. That has helped shape where we are uh, tonight. Staff has also been um, holding one-on-one -on -one meetings with individual uh, property owners. 
um, which we really appreciate um, them making the time to do that and to talk to us about individual problems, which also were considered as, as part of the update tonight. Tonight's um, objective is really to give um, Doug Webster and Will Haskell an opportunity um, to give us an update on the changes that have been made to the plan since the original plan was presented to the council to try, to, and these are not final changes by any means, this is the latest update, um, but we needed to um, get to this point so that we could put some decent figures around the costs um, because the big piece uh, the council needs to start working on is the funding. Um, we do have a TIF district with a certain amount of money in there. We have a commitment from the DOT for one MPI maximum. Um, we have stated in past meetings, given the amount of money the town is putting into this project, which is a state road, not a town road, um, we are hopeful that the DOT will assist us further than that one MPI, and that's the discussion we'll have to have with them. Um, and we also have to consider the fact that not all the money in the TIF will be available until the TIF expires, which is 2028. So the council also need to do some type of bridge funding um, if the project hopefully, and hopefully the project does move forward before 2028. So we've got a lot of pieces on the board moving around. Um, we have water district representatives with us this evening. Um, and we're looking forward to their input on um, what Will has pulled together for the water uh, work to make sure that that matches their uh, plans um, and, and go over that. So um, Doug had typed up a memo and it is in our packet. Um, it's a rather substantial packet um, with drawings and details. Um, and I won't read the, the memo and I don't think Doug needs to. I think we've all kind of uh, read it, um, but I think what we should start with, um, Doug, is the revisions and changes to the base project scope. I think that's a good place to start um, to just kind of bring the, the council up to date on the changes that have been made to the plan since we had that public uh, forum and the one-on-ones. And then perhaps whichever way you and or will feel is the best way to walk us through the project from Main Street up to the end of the project. We'll let you guys do that and uh, feel free to share your screen um, or whatever you need to do to help facilitate that review. So with that, I'll turn the mic over. Okay, uh, thank you. I, I don't know if Will's gonna cover, the, he's probably gonna cover, cover the changes to the base scope uh, in, in a lot more detail, but the initial base scope was presented at the November 14th workshop. And after that, with input from that meeting, as well as from the council, as well as from the one on one meetings, uh, the major components that have been adjusted are uh, moving the sidewalk uh, to the south side for the section of Yarmouth Road between uh, Maine and the new aligned intersection with uh, Hancock and Brown. Um, the second piece is the, the drainage. That's really the, the drainage on the north side is really the major piece. And that's uh, caused some complications and increased the cost. But um, we really feel as though it's a critical uh, component of the project because of the existing conditions. Um, and because of the slightly increased pavement and impervious that the a slightly wider travel lane, I think, I, I know the shoulders, I know, but I don't know if the travel lanes are getting wider, but there's going to be a little bit more impervious. But I think Will is covering most of that, and I'm happy to to go on, but um, if Will's comfortable, I'll, I defer to, to him. He and I have kind of been working very collaboratively on this. Sure, I can I can cover that. So. I think I'll just start with just a, a little bit more detail on the on the changes that have happened since since November or the last time that we made a presentation, and then um, we can 
get into uh, some more details of the plans after that and kind of go into some specific areas that I'd like to touch on. So Doug mentioned, um, you know, from Main to Brown Street, we we moved the sidewalk um, from the north side of the street, um, or the side of the street that the church is on to the south side of the street. Uh, we added a three foot wide esplanade in that section. So a three foot wide grass esplanade in between the sidewalk and the uh, the curb. Uh, a couple other things, this may have been shown on the last set of plans, but we've got a, we've got a crosswalk with uh, flashing beacons uh, across Yarmouth Road at um, the new Brown Street, Hancock Street intersection. Um, we, as Doug mentioned, added uh, enclosed drainage and curbing on the north side of Yarmouth Road, basically up the hill, um, mainly because there's an existing ditch in that location with driveway culverts that um, has caused a lot of problems, uh, including, you know, icing and drainage running out into the road in the wintertime, especially. Uh, the ditch requires a significant amount of maintenance, which is a which is a challenge because of for traffic control and uh, a variety of reasons. Uh, so we we've added that, and we can get into the more details on that uh, when we get into the plans. <clears throat> um, also, based on some of the comments that we received relative to the drainage concerns up on the hill in particular, uh, we've we've really focused in on the on the drainage system up on that hill. And uh, typically, when we get into a, a steeper roadway section or a steeper profile of the road, um, when you have an enclosed drainage system, that that water is really kind of shooting down the gutter line of the of the road, and um, it tends to just zip on right by a single catch basin grate and ultimately ends up down at the bottom of the hill anyway. So we've done some modeling on this and and basically uh, we've we've added double grate catch basins on both sides of the road going up that hill section in particular and we'll get in we'll, you'll see that when we get into the plans. Um, but the double grates uh, do a much better job of, of catching that water as it runs down the gutter line rather than having it bypass and, and end up down at the bottom of the hill. Um, we've identified several residential um, foundation drains that currently discharge into the ditch system along the road that we have uh, we've identified a couple <clears throat> that we were, we're putting, we've got on the plans now, and we'll be tying those into the uh, into the enclosed drainage system. Um, I think one big item which relates to both the water district and the town is that north side drainage uh, proved particularly challenging in that the new curb line catch basins and drain pipe are essentially right smack dab over the existing 12 inch water main uh, that runs up Yarmouth Road uh, from Brown Street up to the tank access road. So it's a direct conflict. Um, th that drainage system is in direct conflict with, with the water and we'll, we'll get into this in a little bit, but basically we've um, decided to construct a, a larger, new larger water main all the way from Main Street up to the um, up to the tank access road and I'll get into those details in a bit. Um, I think the other item which wasn't on the plans back in November of 2022 that we've added back in based on comments uh, is the existing sidewalk that runs up the north side of Yarmouth Road, essentially from Brown Street up to number 19 Yarmouth Road. Uh, we heard a lot of comments about concerns about not keeping that or um, uh, take, taking it away. Um, so we really can't keep it in its same location because of a variety of, of grading issues that are associated with it and adding new curbing and reconstructing the road. So right now we've, we've, 
added that back into the project, but it's essentially a complete reconstruction of that existing sidewalk that that runs from Brown Street up to number 19. Uh, so those are those are kind of a summary of of the changes and and things that, to get us to where we are today. <clears throat> um, there are several plans in the uh, in your packet, and we'll we'll dig into those in a minute. I think one other item I'd just like to touch on um, before we get into the into the details on the plans, uh, and, and this is in your in your packet as well. Uh, a little bit of discussion associated with the, uh, I guess I'll call it the undergrounding of overhead utilities on Main Street, um, kind of in the core core village area here from the the Yarmouth Road to Brown Street intersection on Main Street. Um, so Doug had prepared a, a plan um, and I can, share that with you Let's see here exhibit a in the packet yeah so this is attachment a or exhibit a um i think this is the same one that doug included but um it basically shows a kind of an amorphous amoeba if you want to call it that i think those are doug's doug's terms but uh <laughs> that show an area or central area of the uh, the utilities overhead utilities that we would like to put underground or considering to put underground uh, and then identifying the utility poles that are just outside the perimeter of that that are the the poles where the utilities would essentially drop down underground uh, and 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 then be underground from there so if you recall, I think we've we Goral Palmer has pre presented some costs in the past, uh, basically essentially just looking at what it would cost to underground this section from this J pole here, just by the mobile station, up to roughly this location here, which is. Uh, McDonald's here, and then uh, this is the Cumberland Farms. I think it's roughly 450 feet or so. Um, well, that was, you know, assuming 450 feet, that was that was one cost. When you start expanding this this shape to kind of take in all these additional legs and things, the the length of that undergrounding expands significantly. So it goes from about 450 feet to over 1900 feet. <laughs> um, and then there's roughly about 12, at least 12, there may be more, it's a little bit tough to count them up, but um, services that are associated with this, this area. So at 1900 feet, kind of applying our unit costs, uh, and to be truthful, I don't remember what I gave you for 1,400 feet. I think it was in the 1.5 million range or somewhere in that vicinity. Um, going up to 1,930 feet, that cost increases to about six and a half million dollars. <laughs> um, so the reason I'm bringing this up, or the reason we added this to the agenda, is that obviously a portion of this area kind of extends up onto Yarmouth Road and needs to be considered if we're going to be doing work on Yarmouth Road. Um, we we would want to consider what we're doing here with the undergrounding um, kind of as part of this project so we don't have to redig it up in the future. Um, I don't know if you want to how you want to handle this relative to comments and questions if you want me to kind of go through my talking points and then we touch on things later or if we want to kind Did of everyone as we go along uh, my screen just went blank there we go sorry um one question i have is you had a meeting with the cmp uh, representative are they going to be pulling together additional information for us will on this underground or i mean i don't want to go down a tangent on underground because we have got a lot of ground to cover but i know there was a meeting with a representative yeah uh, i'll 
speak to that first. Doug can weigh in if he wants to add anything. So yes, um, we met with the CMP planner, uh, talked about what we were, what the town was was interested in looking at. Um, we actually need to provide him with more information uh, before they can they can start looking at the feasibility of it and the uh, getting us a better cost or a cost from the utility company, let's put it that way, rather than uh, an engineering cost. So we prepared, uh, we being Goral Palmer, kind of prepared a base map. Uh, we got all these poles identified on it. As you can see, we kind of show the principal plan in the background here as well. Um, I think the next step is, is we need to identify the locations of the various transformers and then identify those on this plan. And then we can give that to the planner from CMP and then they can kind of take it from there. So there is a, another final step uh, on our end, not a final step, but another step on our end before the uh, CMP can do what they need to do. In addition to that, we really need to meet with the other utilities. So we need to meet with the Otelco or GoNet Speed. Uh, and I believe there's one or two other utilities on these polls that we need to schedule a meeting with. So there, there's still a little bit more work to do on this, this front. But I at least wanted to mention it just relative to potential impacts to the end of Yarmouth Road here. So that was really the only the, the point in, in bringing it up at this point. Uh, yeah, I, I think we have to keep that aware. And I think uh, Doug mentions in his memo, you know, the you know necessary adjustments to maintain the overhead with improvements, which, again, we have to remember that no matter what happens between this project and Main Street, we're going to have to address the utility poles one way or the other. Whether we keep them above ground or they go under, there's going to be significant costs either way. And we want to make sure when we're Quoting the underground that that's netting out what we're going to have to spend regardless on the overhead if we keep it. Um, and then you also, uh, Dan had made the suggestion of possibly we create an alley and move some of the poles off Main Street and, and maybe that addresses some of the, the visuals that we're looking for or a combination. Um, so I appreciate that. And we do need to keep this in mind when we're discussing any of the projects around these roads. Um, Dan? Thanks, Sandy. Um, yeah, looking at the map, the one in our packet is actually a little smaller than the one that you're displaying, Will. And it's an old map. It's got the old company's farm on it. But I think that, um, and Doug would know the answer to this, I think. I believe that when Cumberland Farms went in, um, a new pole was installed I believe across the street on the corner of the old IGA lot. Is that correct, Doug? They, I know they put uh, Kathy and I, uh, they, the Cumberland Farms is underground power from Main Street to their building. I think they did add a pole though, yes. I think right. They moved, so, they moved to Catch Basin as well. Yeah, I believe that um, the pole, I think on your, that's closest to the letter E, Yep. I believe the next pole closest to the town hall outside your circle is the pole at which Cumberland Farms power goes underground. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then I think the pole marked E that looks like it's outside the circle, I think would need to be inside the circle because I don't think, well, I just think it would make sense since that's where Cumberland Farm Service goes underground. We don't, certainly don't want to have to redo that. Yep. But it would nice. It would be a shame to put one pole up and yep. and, and have to make that jump. So I'm just not sure if that's an issue or not. Cumberland Farm goes underground at E. I've looked at it. So. Oh, okay. So, yep. All right. Um, the other thing um, to Sandy's point earlier, and I don't want to, I know she doesn't want us to spend a lot of time on it, but I think we do have to have a plan B when we start talking about $6 million to put it underground. Um, and the idea would be that, again, in your plan where you have I on Brown Street, um, 
if at either of the next two poles uh, closer to the intersection of Yarmouth and Brown Street, we could go from there across behind those properties over towards the town hall. Um, my question would be, would it be cheaper to run the underground power that way as opposed to keeping it in the middle of the road? And if it was and less expensive to do that, um, it, as Sandy said, it might be a path for power overhead uh, that would get it off Main Street. And then looking at Shaker Road near your letter D uh, from pole nine, or, or if we could run from there behind those buildings to pole two over where the, um, the old village fire station is, um, that would be the other path. What I don't know is how we would service where the, where, um, the Thai restaurant gets its service from. Um, but I, I, I Most don't likely want to, 18. I, it, it would be 18. So we would have to definitely change that. Um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, we obviously we don't want to waste a lot of money and, and anybody's time creating a lot of extra plans, but what I don't want to see happen is for us to find out that what we'd like to have happen is so expensive. We can't do it, but then be in a position to either not have the time to put together the plan B. Um, so I guess that's, that's um, my concern. And then the other piece, when you were talking about having to put a new water main up Yarmouth Road in order to deal with those other situations, I, I'm just gonna, I know um, I sound like a broken record, but the sidewalk issue, the water main issue, we've done these fixes in the past and I'm not finding fault people tried to do a lot of work with, with not a lot of resources. And they, they did these stopgap things like the sidewalk. But now we're gonna end up redoing that work. What we have to do, we've gotta to get to a point where we can plan such that we're adding on and not having to rework existing stuff. So it goes back to, there must be standards for you know, where all these utilities go and going forward, I'm gonna keep beating the same drum. We have to start following those um, because we just can't afford to keep reworking stuff because no one's thinking about the future. And I guess that's all I got to say right now, thanks. So just to comment on that um, is that, so the, the new water main that we are constructing uh, or or we're proposing in the design uh, is in a location that is a, a standard location for a water line in a, in a new road. So uh, drainage runs down the curb lines. The water line is out in the middle of one of the lanes. Uh, if there was ever sewer to put be put in here, it would be running down more the center of the road. So uh, a good a good uh, and I think I presented this. Uh, and I don't know, maybe I've only reviewed it with Doug, but um, some of the larger municipalities have good technical manuals that show, you know, good ideas in terms of where utilities should be located. City of Portland is one. Uh, they have a technical manual that has a very good graphic of, you know, water main here, sewer here, storm drain here. Uh, it, so it's, uh, those standards are out there. Well, and we're spending the money, so I think we should create them for this project and then just expect to use them going forward. Mm -hmm. um, but thanks for that. All right, so do we want to move off of the overhead undergrounding of overhead utilities at this point? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. All right, so the next um, <laughs> the next topic is really to kind of get more into the details of, of the plans and uh, some things associated with where we are with the, with the design plan. So, so this plan set, uh, there's only a, a portion of the, the plans actually in your packet compared to what we have in our, in our actual plan set. I think we have 20, 22 sheets or so in our plan set with 
a variety of details and right-of-way maps and other things, but uh, the plans that were presented in your packet kind of show the, the nuts and bolts of, of where we are. Um, so just a reminder for everybody on the meeting and uh, the uh, abutters, if there's any abutters on the meeting. So the project limits include about 3,500 feet of Yarmouth Road, basically from Main Street. Uh, so I'll use my my overall map here from, from Main Street here all the way up to, uh, uh, I should know these numbers off the top of my head. I believe it's 59 or just past 59. 70, uh, 70. 70, all right, 70 uh, Yarmouth Road. Uh, also includes the realignment of, of Brown Street intersection right here. <clears throat> uh, so the plan is to expand the road right of way to a, 60, a consistent 60 foot width uh, all the way from Main Street up to the end. Uh, and as we've discussed before, from, from Main Street to Brown Street, there is a defined right of way that's about, it's a 49 and a half foot right of way. And then from essentially just past Brown Street up to the end is what's called the rock portion right of way that varies in width. Um, and it's it's based on the, the portion or the area utilized by the road and the ditches essentially. Um, so it, it varies anywhere from uh, 35 feet to 45 feet, roughly in there. Uh, but the goal is to expand the right of way to a 60 foot right of way um, uh, all the way up through. <clears throat> that being said, there are three properties that we've narrowed the right of way up uh, a fraction. Um, at eight Yarmouth Road, nine Yarmouth Road, and 30 Yarmouth Road. So eight, nine Yarmouth Road are, are in the section between Maine and, and Brown, and 30 Yarmouth Road is, is up near uh, Beehive Lane. So we can get into those when I when I get into the plans if you want. But uh, so the base portion of the project is reconstructing that 3,500 feet of Yarmouth Road. So that's full depth reconstruction going in, removing the asphalt, removing the base gravels and putting in new gravels and, and, and asphalt. Uh, adding uh, a new sidewalk, uh, roughly about 28, a little over 2,800 feet of new five foot sidewalk up the south side of the road uh, from Main Street up to Hillcrest. <clears throat> Uh, again, from Main Street to Brown, there would be a three foot esplanade and basically from Brown all the way up to Hillcrest would be a five foot wide uh, grass esplanade. Uh, we're also reconstructing uh, 380 feet of, of sidewalk basically associated with the Brown Street intersection up to 19, uh, number 19 Yarmouth Road, which is roughly in here. <clears throat> Drainage uh, is basically all new um, enclosed drainage system, which includes 44 full-size catch basins, includes 15 what we call field inlet catch basins. These are two foot square uh, basins, a little bit smaller than a standard catch basin. Usually those are kind of, they're not, not out in the road at the curb line. They might be picking up drainage uh, behind the sidewalk or uh, next to someone's driveway or something like that. Uh, and then we have about 3,000 feet of 12 inch to 24 inch diameter storm drain pipe that discharges in four different locations. And we'll get into that when I get into the details on the plan. But there's, there's one right here. Um, behind the church that discharges between number 12 and 14 uh, Yarmouth Road. And then uh, we've, let's see here, got this written down. We've got one at 24 Yarmouth Road, one at 26 Yarmouth Road and Beehive Drive. And then we've got one up here at the end, uh, an outfall up here. Um, Another uh, thing that we're looking at and we've had some initial meetings on uh, is relocation of existing 
overhead utility poles. <clears throat> so there's a number of poles that have to be relocated uh, due to the uh, addition of the sidewalk or the planned potential future addition of a sidewalk if we were to extend one up the northerly side of the road. So we've met with CMP, we've met with GoNet Speed, um, and there are a number of poles, uh, utility poles that would have to be relocated and kind of pushed pushed out further away from the road. Uh, they seem to be on board with that, and the cost to relocate those poles uh, and the overhead wires and the associated clearing would be borne by the utility companies, not by the cost of the project, not by the town. <clears throat> And finally, uh, well, why don't we get into the sum of the plans? So uh, get off this. And so this plan here is is really just a typical section plan. <clears throat> it shows the the typical sections of of various portions of the road. So the first one is basically just the Brown Street um, typical section. Basically shows. Uh, 15 foot wide lanes with a five foot sidewalk up against the curb line. <clears throat> We're really only reconstructing a short section. It's probably about hundred feet of, of Brown Street. Then we've got Yarmouth Road. So this first section, typical section one is from <clears throat> uh, Main Street to essentially Brown Street. Uh, Again, 11 foot travel lanes with three foot shoulders. Um, so basically 28 feet of pavement. We've got a three foot wide esplanade and then we've got the five foot wide sidewalk on the, the south side of the road. <clears throat> and we have Brown Street um, from, uh, not Brown Street, excuse me, Yarmouth Road, essentially from Brown Street up to Hillcrest. Uh, again, same section, road section, 28 feet, five foot wide esplanade here, not three, and then five foot wide sidewalk. And then finally, from Hillcrest to the end, um, we've we've got curbing on both sides of the road. We've we've got enclosed drainage up there, but we've eliminated the sidewalk in that section and esplanade, and we we have uh, 28 feet um, of travel way and shoulders. So those are just the typical sections that show would show the contractor how to how we want each of those areas built. So then we get into the the actual design plans, what we call plan and profiles. So on this sheet, uh, just to kind of get everybody oriented. So we're starting down here at Main Street. So this is Yarmouth Road here. The blue line is the proposed 60 foot wide right of way, which is essentially centered on the road. So 30 feet on either side. Uh, you can see the existing right of way, which is 49 and a half feet is this lighter black line kind of just inside of the, the proposed blue line. Uh, so we're, we're still showing that, that existing right of way line in here. So these plans are, are basically, uh, they're fully graded. Um, you can see the sidewalk on the south side with a three foot wide esplanade. You can see the proposed vertical granite curb. Uh, you can see new drainage structures. Uh, so down here, we've got a couple new catch basins that are tying into the existing storm drain pipe that, that runs out to Main Street here. Um, and then you can see just on this side of the plan, uh, uh, plan right, uh, you can see the storm drain pipe that comes in behind the church, in between the church and Nine Yarmouth Road. Um, got new catch basins there with a new, uh, uh, an upgraded outfall uh, that, that discharges to, a, I'll call it a swale uh, on that side. Profile view basically shows the, the center line profile of the road. So the dark uh, solid line is the, the new profile. You can see the existing profile of the road is the dashed line. So we're, we're tweaking the profile just a little bit 
trying to make some improvements here or there, but it's it's really pretty minimal. We're trying to, in this area, we're trying to follow the existing road line uh, profile as, as closely as we can. Um, and then you can see the the storm drains in, in profile view, and then you can also see the water main uh, in profile view, which is uh, shown at roughly or typically six feet of cover. Uh, it may change and dip to go underneath drainage at various locations, but you can see the water main running down here. I mentioned a couple locations where we've we've tweaked the proposed uh, right of way. So eight Yarmouth is one of those locations. You can see where we bump the right of way in uh, across the frontage of their lot, and mainly because if we if we ran it straight across at the you know thirty foot offset off the center line, we'd be right at the front, pretty much right at the front steps of this house. So we thought it would be better to give them a little more, a little more flexibility there. So we we bumped that um, that proposed right of way in. Pretty much matches, almost matches the existing right of way at that location, um, but just gives them a little more, little more room there because they're uh, we were right up tight to the to the front steps of that house if we uh, if we kept that sixty foot right of way in there. Similarly, um, we did the same thing at Nine Yarmouth Road. Uh, so that's this property here, um, and you can see we've we've bumped that right of way out. Again, we didn't bump it all the way out to where it is existing, um, but we bumped that out all the way up to the New Brown Street intersection. If if we held that thirty foot offset all the way through here, and we'll see it on the next plan. Um, we'd be right into the uh, the ADA access ramp for the church. Um, and we, we wanted to stay on the roadside of that. So we weren't weren't buying the <laughs> the ADA access access way to the to the church. But um, again, similarly, there's some steps out here off off the front of this off this building here at nine. And we did, if we kept that at the 30 foot offset, it, we we'd be pretty close to those. So that's the reason why we we kind of bump that bump that out at those locations. So the next plan is hold should... up just a second, Will. Sure. Um, yeah. So I I think what I'll do is just let people if anyone has any specific questions on the first section, um, yeah. rather than try to hold and then go all the way back. Um, that makes so... sense. Yeah, the only question I had um, on this section, and I I want to reiterate that the, the the moving of the sidewalk from the north to the south side was actually something the residents asked for that actually live along a stretch of road, or at least one resident did. And I I believe subsequent questions with everyone who is and is impacted by that change have taken place. So I don't want people to think we just decided out of the blue we we're going to move it. We originally had it on the north side. And, and this is an example of why we're talking to the residents and it's the same with the drainage. It's they, they know the road better than we do. Um, and so we're, we're hoping to fix as many problems as we can. Um, the question I had is, is um, with this setup and, and the sidewalk and the calculations, will any on-street parking be allowed between or fit between Brown Street and Main Street on the north side? So I think on the previous plans, um, we had shown some on-street parking in front of the, the town's parcel in here. Um, I would say, yeah, it could still fit there. I know one of the things I think I've talked to Doug about, but not sure we've discussed it at the at the council was, the challenge is we've got this existing little curb cut for the, the pocket park that went in here. Uh -huh. And to really get any effective parking spaces in there and maintain separations to curb cuts, you would really need to get rid of that curb cut to, to put the parking spaces in there. I think you could probably get four, maybe five, but probably more likely four within the 
the front end of that parcel. Um, but if you if you want to keep that curb cut into the little the little paver area, you'd probably reduce it to about two um, because of the the offsets that you need from those those curb cuts to provide adequate sight distance. So yeah, in theory, uh, if you wanted to get rid of the curb cut, you could get four spaces or so in there and it would essentially replace the spaces that are, I think you've got two, maybe three spaces in the, in the paver area. Um, it's a tough little area to get in and out of, uh, having driven in there and parked in there and pulled, tried to pull out of there. So I would think my suggestion or recommendation would be if you if you wanted on street parking, that would be the place to put it. Uh, but it, it would probably be best to get rid of the parking in here and eliminate that that curb cut to do that. Yeah, and actually, I think you know I, the um, pavers have been used for for other things as far as you know setting up the farmers market or having a class and that kind of thing. I haven't seen a whole lot of people parking because there's a municipal parking lot right there. Right. I mean, um, it's, it's and right yeah, here. and if we end up reconfiguring this whole corner, yeah. um, I that answers my question. So I just wanted to make sure that there was still um, space there, and if we were, yeah. So that. That really to, is the, to close off that curb cut. That actually makes sense to me. Uh, yeah, that's really the only space that I would see available. Um, you know, I don't think that it's r realistic to look at on street parking on the south side just because it would push everything right up to the fronts of these houses. Uh, and then as you get up in here, this is a Roma Joe's here at six uh, Brown Street. Um, their drive aisle around um, actually extends slightly over the, that 60 foot right of way line, which you can see see right here. There's a little crescent shape there, um, which probably isn't a great thing, <laughs> but that we probably need to deal with. Um, but you really can't add any parking spaces, on street parking spaces in, in this area because of that. Um, that encroachment right there. So I, I really think the only place is 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 right here um, in this in this section. Yep, that makes sense. Thank you, Will. Uh, go ahead, Dan. Thanks, Sandy. Um, I'll start where you left off, Will, with the Aroma Joes. Um, given. Um, I know that when that went through planning board, there was a lot of conversation about um, traffic flow through and around Aroma Joe's. Given the changes that we're making to Yarmouth Road, is there any value in talking with Aroma Joe's and rethinking the way they get in and out of there? Because now would be the time to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think my, I have to look at it again to be sure, but their only entrance is off of Brown Street, and this is just a one way out. Um, I'm doubtful that we could, if if what you're thinking is that you could make this a, a two way in and out. Uh, Actually, I wasn't, I wasn't presupposing anything, just okay. raising the thought that you know, if we're going to make a change, at least we should think about it. Maybe the answer is, nope, we just leave it the way it is. And that's okay by me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's something uh, we should, we should probably look at a little bit closer and to be truthful, I haven't, I haven't that's looked okay. at that closely at this point. So um, that's why we're having the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a good, it's I, I a good point. You, though, I think we ought to make sure that, um, you know, the right of way issue in their travel lane. I don't know how that gets sorted out, whether you, you know, whether we do another bump in the right of way or whatever, but. Um, yeah, the mm -hmm. easiest thing would probably be to just take this, this bump at nine and just boop, extend it right across to the town, the town property line right here. And yeah, and not have to deal with, uh, deal with that issue. <laughs> 
would and that wouldn't affect the idea of parking right because you're the parking would all be further down towards main street correct okay all right so that was that was one thought um the the bump outs the right of way we're looking for a right of way and we've been telling people that the road's not going to be as big as the right of way but we're looking for the right of way so that we can do ever, whatever work needs to be done to the road and the road's infrastructure. Um, so I'm assuming you wouldn't have proposed this if there was if we were going to compromise our ability to do that work in the future. Propose the bump outs, right? Yeah, or the bump ins. <laughs> bump ins, yeah, how, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's that's safe to say. I think the the areas where we propose them, I'm not seeing a, any compromise on on any potential future work in there okay uh, how about when we get to the new intersection for brown street what's the right of way at that intersection now yeah so i guess that's on my next sheet so oh okay sorry does I'll, any I'll... does anybody else i guess have any questions on this sheet before we we ship I on. do. One of them is um, placements of the utility poles. Are we going to have to move any poles? So this this plan actually shows. Um, so we'll I'll zoom in right here. Uh, this is in front of uh, four six Yarmouth Road. So this is the Fitch Company building. Yep. Here. Uh, well, actually, I think this is the this is. I think that's labeled incorrectly. I think this is the Fitch Company building here. Sorry okay. about that. That that label needs to move over to this this sheet. But okay. uh, so the existing pole, you can see it uh, falls right underneath, or is is right in the middle of the sidewalk, or yeah. off the edge of the sidewalk. So we're in this area. We're just shifting those poles, basically a few feet off the back side of the sidewalk as we get okay. further up. The project, you'll see those poles shifting a little bit further away from the back of the sidewalk if we have the space. Uh, it's just in here, we don't want to go too far back, given the proximity of the fronts of these houses to the to the right of way. So we're basically just shifting it back uh, a few feet. Uh, so you can see you can see one here. There's another pole here, which is right on the curb line. Uh, we're shifting that to the back of the sidewalk. You can yeah. see another one here that's right in the curb, uh, shifting that to the back of the sidewalk. So we show all those poles that need to be relocated um, and, and where we're proposing to relocate them to. Good, thanks for that lesson. I didn't recognize the symbols. Yep. Um, the other piece that goes along with that is trees. So the current location of trees and getting a sense of what we may be looking at that either have to replace or to plant. Yep. Uh, and that's early days, but that was my other thought for this section. Um, I'm in favor of the parking. Um, I'm going to say this and I'm going to preface it because I, I want it to be received correctly. Um, I'm not trying to find fault. Uh, it's all water under the bridge as far as I'm concerned. I voted against the parking, the, the, the pocket park, primarily because I was almost certain that that we were gonna be in a position where we we're gonna have to dig up some of what we did. And that parking space, I've tried to turn around in there in my car. And if you do like an eight point turn, turn you can get in and out of it. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, I fall victim to wanting to try new things too, but we have got to discipline ourselves enough such that we we don't have to rework the stuff. And I really think if we can get four parking spaces in there, um, we should do that. Uh, the only other question I have is any signage that we put up along the road, um, will that be uh, on the inside of the parking, uh, the sidewalks or would it have to be be uh, between the sidewalk and the street? So no parking or, you know, whatever we put up. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it could uh, go in either location. I think one of the things that we're still 
working out the details on, for example, it's not signage, but there's a hydrant, uh, existing hydrant. You can see it right here. Yeah. We've currently got it drawn in between the sidewalk and the, and the curb. That's asking to get smacked by a plow plow wing or something. So yeah. I think we're going to be moving that to the back side of the sidewalk. Um, yeah. So the back side of the sidewalk is always safer, but we've also we've always got to look at for signage. How easy is it to be seen? You know, can you see it? Uh, is it front and center to you if you shift it back? You know, in this case, more than eight feet off the off the edge of the road. Um, so we've we've got to kind of look at that in terms of signage, in terms of where it would go. Well, one of the things we've talked about doing, and I hope it comes out of this project, is um, design standards for sidewalks. And I think all of the things you just mentioned, you know, plow wings and all the rest of it, you, you know, you, you have to live with mailboxes in that space. You just can't ever get around that. Right. But I really think I would, I would advocate for us keeping everything we possibly can on the inside of the, uh, of the sidewalk. Um, I think it would also make it easier for the public works people. Um, and I think there are even instances when it would make it easier for the public safety people. So that I'll just put a pitch in for that. Okay. Um, and I guess that's my last question on this section. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Um, and uh, just to be clear, Will, I'm in favor of the on-street parking too. And and um, if we close off that curb cut, I will say that that doesn't necessarily mean we have to pull up the pavers. So like I said, the pavers are being used as part of the park. So yeah. just, just want to point that out. Um, and I think that we are kind of all in agreement that we'd like to get some on-street parking here and potentially on Brown, you know, down the down the road so that we can um, help alleviate some of the requirements. Uh, we may want to try and uh, we're putting on our businesses for for parking. Um, Krista, oh, go ahead. We we may want to try and figure out a way to do kind of a mountable a mountable curb in that curb cut area in behind the parking spaces, just so it's easy for someone to get up in there if they have to get up in there. But um, so we can we can work out a detail for that too. Yeah, and I I see Kathy's hand is up and um, it is in a public forum. But since she's uh, in, intricately involved in the in the park, I, I'm uh, definitely going to let her. Ch Kathy uh, Tomborelli, nine. I'm in here. Road. I will say that from from the work sessions that I've been at, we've kind of accessed the park. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I just say I'm a super supportive of the parking. I always thought that that is more of a patio than a parking area. Um, that was just, you know, different role, different time. Um, so super supportive of the parking there. It makes sense. There's really no other place on Yarmouth Road to park safely. Um, even though it's being done currently, the place for parking is brown because of the width. It just makes more sense back there. It's safer, uh, slower speeds, and it just makes more sense. But overall, really love the changes. And I really appreciate what the council and the planning department has done. Thanks, Kathy. And um... Just to finish my thought there is um, most of the work that happens at the park, you know, we we tend to park in the municipal parking lot and there is a great access point to the pocket part right there. So I, I think it'll be minimal impact. Um, Krista, uh, are you OK with that? I want to make sure. Yeah, I totally agree. We need some parking there and it makes sense, um, especially given how turning out of that park is for traffic control in that space. It just doesn't really work. So I think closing off the um, entrance to the park there off of Yarmouth Road and utilizing that space for parking makes a lot of sense. Okay, Marty, are you good with that? Great, he's got a thumbs up going there. there so I think we're good. All right, any other questions on this section? Let's see from Krista or Marty. So I think you're probably good to move on to the next section, Will. All right. Okay, so <laughs> I think even with a bump in on this in front of the church, we are still in their, their access 
uh, sidewalk that kind of comes up the side. I, I thought we were out of it, but I guess we're not looking at this again. But so this is actually bumped. Well, it's bumped in from the from the sixty foot. I have to look at that because it doesn't look right to me. I'll I'll double check that. <laughs> um, so a couple things we we talked about um, kind of building uh, drains, foundation drains that kind of get discharged into an existing ditch or things. The church actually has a couple roof drains. Uh, that discharge out to the road here today, not even into a ditch. So uh, we're going to pick those up and, and tie those into the, uh, you can see the, the leaders right here. We're going to pick those up and tie those into the enclosed drainage system um, as, we, as we go by there. Um, so again, I mean, this plan uh, shows uh, the realigned Brown Street intersection shows uh, the proposed right of way again in blue. So the existing right of way, you can see the, the, the point here, the triangle. So we're gonna be pairing that off. Um, you can see their existing sign, uh, church signs right here, uh, existing disposal field, uh, we're gonna have to pull that sign back um, that's it can it could slide a couple feet so it's not in the disposal field it's kind of right on the edge but um, so we've got some some details to work out there uh, one of the other things that we're looking at uh, because of it's kind of a little bit outside the the limits of this project but it, it came up in some of the uh, discussions is that there's some drainage ponding that occurs uh, back here uh, at the back of the church and uh, onto uh, property, the O9, 9 Yarmouth Road property. So we're looking at adding a catch basin in here um, and then reconstructing this drain pipe, having to reconstruct this drain pipe uh, over to Yarmouth Road uh, because of invert issues. So it's a very shallow pipe and it's a really challenging pipe to actually put catch basins on because it's so shallow. Um, when we did the Brown Street sidewalk a number of years ago, uh, it doesn't show up on this plan, but there's a catch basin on the other side of Brown Street that I think we ended up having to leave that in place because we couldn't actually get a new catch basin uh, constructed that would fit. Um, so we've got to dig into this a little bit more. We're showing catch basins here now, but we may have to come up with an innovative innovative solution there um, to, to get this catch basin in place here. So we're looking at that as we as we move forward. But uh, so Brown Street, um, I guess We'll talk about this sidewalk that that goes up, um, follows Brown Street now and goes up to 19 Yarmouth Road. So that sidewalk basically runs, if you can follow my cursor, um, something like this. And we are going to reconstruct that. Uh, so it follows the curb line along the new aligned intersection and then runs up along the curb line to 19, 19 Yarmouth Road. Now we're, we're changing the width of the road a little bit in here. So it, it just makes it very challenging to leave it in its existing location. It would be nice if we could just leave the existing sidewalk there for cost reasons and a number of other reasons, but it, um, it, we just haven't come up with a way to, to be able to save that infrastructure. So we're, we're proposing to reconstruct it along the curb line uh, as shown on this plan. Um, there's one utility pole right here. Everybody's probably seen it. It's got wires coming into it from every direction imaginable. Um, that is one pole that the utility companies have asked us not to relocate <laughs> if we don't have to because it would be a it would be a quite an undertaking. So 
that's why you can you'll see that we're kind of bumping out around that pole and just leaving that pole in place um but we're we are relocating a number of other utility poles as we go up through the corridor here is it is there a reason why because i know this came up you know th this comes up in other street projects and you have these weird orphan poles that end up you know 10 years from now, people will be like, what the heck were they thinking? Why didn't they just move the pole? Um, so I, I, I'd like, a. is it just the cost that they would bear or? It, it's the cost and just the, uh, the lack of a better term, the conglomeration of utilities that are just coming in from all different directions on this thing. Um, and I mean, we can we can broach the subject again, um, but based on our initial meeting out there, they were they were very very reluctant to to relocate that pole. Um, yeah, I, I think if we could just get you know if they can just document at least for us the reasoning behind why it can't be moved, I think it would you know it would be beneficial. If we end up leaving it there, then we have a a document that kind of explains why. Right. Right. Yeah, we can we can add that to our list for the next next discussion on that. Uh, so this sidewalk here would be the one that has the uh, the rapid beacons. So there would be uh, rapid flashing beacons here that would be activated when someone pushes the button on either side. Um, we do have a little bit of a unique or interesting situation here at 16 Yarmouth. So. 16 Yarmouth actually has two curb cuts. They have one that's kind of odd and that it's right off of Hancock Street here um, that comes in. And then they have another one that comes off of Hancock Street. Makes for a long crosswalk here because it's it's basically all paved across Hancock Street and this, this driveway, but... Um, that's the best solution that we've come up with to date. Um, it may be worth a discussion with the with this property owner to discuss discuss that curb cut off of Yarmouth Road. But uh, that's that's why that looks a little bit different in there. Um, so here is where we're shifting from a, a three foot esplanade to a five foot esplanade. So you can see the the slightly wider esplanade here. Um, and then there's a fair amount of drainage in here. You can see a number of catch basins that weren't initially anticipated, but this is a very flat, I don't know, uh, it's, yeah, it doesn't show super flat in there, but th there's just a number of drainage issues in here. And if, if you've ever paid attention to the drainage out there, there's a, there's a little bit of an oddity out here I think up in this area, um, when we did this Brown Street sidewalk, we ended up doing a little um, couple tip downs in the curb there to allow the drainage to kind of flow off the road because we we um, didn't have any catch basins or or structures that we could we could get it to. So we're just working on trying to get enough drainage structures in here to collect collect the drainage in this area. Uh, looks a little bit congested, but um, we've also got a number of issues with drainage behind the sidewalk uh, on both sides of the road. So we've added what these are these field inlets that I was telling you about that are the two foot square uh, catch basins with a grade on it. Um, and, and basically, this is a perfect example. We've got some on both sides of the road where we've got some pockets of uh, low pockets back here behind the sidewalk that we need to collect the drainage in. And that's where we, we put in those field inlets. Um, what else do we have on this plan? So this is our second drainage discharge location. So the first one was down by the church. Uh, this is another one here that takes takes some some drainage flow. Um, there's also a culvert inlet on the uh, the north side of the road here that's existing today. So we're we're going to keep that. Uh, it picks up kind of a drainage swale that comes in from 
uh, actually from behind the playing fields at, at town hall um, and, and comes out here and, and then discharges over in this swale on the, on the south side of the road. I think that's all I really needed to mention on this this plan. Um, so we can open it up to uh, to questions. Anyone have any questions? The only question I had was the orphan poll, so I'm good. Okay. Uh, Krista, go ahead. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, well, I just had one question going back to um, the the church and other uh, houses that have perimeter foundation drains draining yeah. into the street that we're going to catch. Um, yeah. uh, Doug had a note in his memo that we would add those into our drainage work, provided that they are only perimeter foundation drains. And I'm just wondering how we would go about confirming those drainages, drainage um, areas are only coming from people's foundations or off the building.